The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Okay. Okay, we're live. Good afternoon. This is Kimel Nonuma from Pasadena, California. We're getting ready to start the BIMSTORM Oklahoma City webinar. Number four. Tammy, are you ready or should we wait a little bit longer? Fine if why don't you introduce yourself too while we're waiting. Yes, hi, and this is Fine if Jernigan from Salisbury, Maryland. We're um, we're just waiting for the uh, everybody to get settled in, in Norman, Oklahoma. Are you showing your screen? Yeah. Do you see my screen or not yet? No. You don't? I don't think so. Oh, that's strange. Organizer. Oh, okay. That wasn't showing yet. Okay, there we go. All right. We're having a little bit of a bumpy start here. We're waiting for Tammy and Lee's class to be ready in Norman, Oklahoma. College of Architecture. Hello, Tammy or Lee, are you there? We heard you earlier, but we're not hearing you now. Okay. Can you hear me now? Come on, I'm here. There we go. Yeah, loud and clear. Can you hear me now? Come on, I'm here. Oh, we get an echo. That's why we don't do it in this room. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna mute. Okay. I assume you're ready. We can go ahead and start then, right? I think she's just gone off to listen so okay so we'll go ahead and start so this is the last webinar before going live this week in um, Oklahoma City um, and we have just updated the bimstorm.com slash OKC website uh, with an agenda for the next uh, few days and actually this whole week um, if you go to the top here there's an agenda and there's a few other links here, but on the agenda page, um, you can see information. Maybe Bynath, do you want to kind of run through this real quickly and explain sure. what's happening? I guess what I guess what we need, what we like to start with, is just kind of do an overview of what we're what we're doing today, and then uh, we'll just touch on the high points of what what's going to happen over the next week. Um, as we start off here today, Kamon's going to review with everybody uh, some of the concepts related to parcels timeline and cost management just to get everybody, make sure that we've covered all of the critical issues as people get, get really jump into the uh, live session. Um, one of the things we're going to do that, that's been in process now for about three weeks, uh, there's, a, there's a very com very complete clinic project that that we're making available to everybody so that uh, for those who want to dive deeper into the possibilities of looking at outputs to Kobe and, and some of the other uh, specialty uh, tools that, that are possible, uh, this clinic will let you do that. Kamon's going to go over that. And then we would, I guess, right here we'd like to uh, make sure we state and make sure everybody clearly understands some of the expectations some of the things that we're hoping to see as the uh, the week unfolds, we really we really hope by this point everybody understands that really this is these BIM storms are about collaboration, and the the idea here is to show your work. We we really do want to see progress in how you get get from point A to point B or from point A to point Z. The the fact that you come up with a wonderful um, solution that's totally out of context you know nobody can kind of see how you got there is really kind of counter to what we're what the whole BIM uh, approach is and we're we're trying to break the cycle of working in the ivory tower and you know coming coming in down the road and throwing the throwing the work over the ivory throwing the work over the wall into the next silo so we're hoping that all of everybody understands and everybody will really uh, do their best to you know stay in communication, um, keep everybody informed, show people how you get are doing things, but you know may may raise bad feelings, but 
treat it kind of like you're in a uh, your first geometry class and you have to show your work because that's really what we're expecting to see at this point. Um, you know, the whole idea here is also to support better planning, design, and construction outcomes. So, so by showing your work, collaborating better, that we believe that you'll you'll start seeing the benefits in many many other parts of the process. You know, if you're if you're going off in the, you know, just off by yourself and working and working and working and coming up with solutions that nobody understands or has a connection to. That's where the problems where people are concerned about the design quality and the, you know, is it the right planning? But if you if you open up and communicate during this, um, a lot of those problems go away. You know, we're hoping that everybody really, as that all unfolds, is really looking at studying different things. Kamon, I think, mentioned where where what we're really looking for is let's study the train wrecks and let's do the train wrecks now at the beginning. Rather than waiting till way down the line and having a, um, you know, having something put in concrete and then having the train wrecks, um, so use the system to evaluate and test so that you can improve what how your decisions are made. For those of you that um, that value these kind of things, on Friday we will be having a live presentation from from Oklahoma City up at the library, one of, I guess at the Central Library in Oklahoma City. And during that presentation, what we're hoping to do is highlight some of the work from both students and from the industry participants. And what we really hope that as you're doing that, you'll uh, what we're needing to do that is we're going to need your input. We need to be able to see what you're doing and how you're doing it. Um, and and if we get results from people that show collaboration, show you know, show using the tools, and we're not talking about using the Enuma system. We're talking about using BIM tools. Uh, we're hoping that you know, do do early planning in the Enuma system. Look at Kobe. Look at estimating. Look at setting your cost budgets. Get yourself what I call get in get in the box about the projects you're looking at, and then push them out to other things. Push them out to Revit. Push them out to estimating systems. All of those are the all of those are valued. The whole idea here is to use the right tool for the right job, and um, if we if you do that and if you'll document your workflows, the whole idea is on Friday to really be able to recognize people who have actually been successful and you know or, or maybe even been unsuccessful at those operations because the reality is in this the the failures sometimes you learn as much or more from than you do the successes. And so we're we're going to uh, we're, our plan is to you know give the people who were you know working on this the credit and let the let people see what you came up with. So we're hoping that 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 really you know that's really one of your focuses over the next few days. Okay, with that, come on, can you go back up a little bit? Let's just let's just touch on Thursday a little bit, Wednesday and Thursday. Um, Okay, so Wednesday's the official, the official uh, full day of the BIM storm. We're going to start off at nine o'clock in the morning with a live session, nine to nine to ten. Just kind of go over, go over all the last last minute details, touch on on things, just to make sure everybody's kind of got a level playing field out there, and everybody understands what's going on. Kamon is going to at that point. Um, He'll go over some of the seed projects just for the for those of you that are looking to, you know, looking for a forum to explore. Kamon's going to go over some of those, and then at ten o'clock, you know, it's basically Katie bar the door. Everybody uh, go to work and uh, you know see what you can come up with. We'll be online most of the time. Uh, if you've got questions or emails, actually, uh, come on, let's let's make sure we show everybody the BIM mail one last time. We're going to be very. We're going to try to stay right on the BIM mail for this period, and so if you've got a problem, you kick off a BIM mail out asking for help. We'll be trying to jump in as quick as we can to help you. Um, at 2:45 to 4, we've got a live session that you, you really probably want to try to try to attend if you can on Wednesday. Um, one of the things we've managed to do, uh, Balfour Beatty Construction, out of their Largely out of their DC office, but pretty much, you know, 
you know they're a pretty big international firm. They are using they're using these processes in their they're building them into their whole process the whole construction and development process. Well, Balfour Beatty is going to be coming in. They've been working about three weeks now on the clinic project project that Camone's uh, going to show you a, that you can use as a prototype as well. And they'll, I think you'll find it really interesting to see the kind of stuff they're able to do with with these tools and how fast and efficient it is. Um, we'll also touch on some handover and some other some other specialty items that that really are very difficult to do when you're outside of this cloud-based environment, but but that you can do if you want to do as you finish up. Um, Thursday morning we're going to do a, a wrap-up session. I've, it's our understanding the students are pretty much on a deadline to have work turned in by 9 o'clock in the morning on Thursday. And so at 10 o'clock what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick, uh, quick and I guess just call it quick and dirty kind of overview, uh, uh, talk to some of the teams, look at what people have done, go over, just do a quick, kind of a here's the kind of stuff that's popping up hopefully we'll be able to identify some of these workflows and some of the process people have been using and you know just be prepared we're you know we we're the rest of the day we're going to be preparing the presentation for Friday so some of you that have uh, come up with some cool stuff maybe we'll be asking for you to help us to uh, package it so that we can show it on Friday and I think with that come on that's pretty much the you have anything to add that I miss anything there it's uh, I think that's pretty much our the agenda yeah. for for the next week. So. Right. Let's go a little bit over in more detail about some of this. So we'll be posting links on this page. So if you go to bimstrom.com/okc, this page, the agenda page, is going to be updated as we adjust. For example, if we have a link to a webinar, we'll post it here. Um, and um, the Monday session is obviously today. A couple points I'd like to emphasize again here on this page is we do want to see process. We don't want to see just the final product. Um, we heard today from Tammy in a discussion we had earlier that J.E. Dunn Manhattan Construction and Austin Commercial is currently working with some of the teams, um, the student teams. Um, we'd like to see what some of the assumptions are, are interactions that are happening there. So we, can, we, we haven't seen anything, so we're just imagining things like, for example, maybe Austin Commercial is looking at uh, marketability of uh, residential units in Oklahoma City. What's the capacity to put, you know, can we put a thousand units in of housing over the next two years? Does it have the capacity to absorb that? The business side of why are we building stuff here is also important to, for us to understand for the planning department on Friday. I'm sure that's going to be of interest of how do we sequence construction not only to build out a great design but also to support the economy, the local economy and the housing market, etc. So we'd like to see the dynamics of that. Manhattan Construction is involved as well, Jay Dunn. We're not sure exactly what interaction is going on there, but we heard that there already are discussions ongoing. So far, we've seen zero output from that. So we'd like to start seeing that uh, on Wednesday. And even today, you could start posting things. We'll, we'll show you some examples of where you can, how and where you can post some of that to your projects. So tomorrow, Tuesday, is our travel day. Finest is actually going to be flying out to Oklahoma City. Uh, I will be staying in Pasadena, supporting remotely. My team, on my team, will be in Pasadena. Uh, Finest will be flying on Tuesday. Wednesday, we start the actual first live event. Um, we'll have a webinar posted for the live session starting at 2:45. There's there are two sessions on Wednesday, essentially the morning session, which is kind of the kickoff and the prep work, and um, that there'll be a webinar for that as well. And then the afternoon session, session B, from 2:45 to 4. We'll have other teams like Balfour Beatty that uh, Finanth mentioned jumping in and presenting and interacting with us. So during these two sessions on Wednesday, we want to see some output from the teams that are working on things, even if they're not completed. We want to actually see the process. What are you doing? What are you struggling with? What inputs are you getting? What are your, how are you defining the program? Even some freehand sketches. Take a photograph with your smartphone or a freehand sketch that's going on or a meeting that's happening. If we don't see activity here, you get less points toward the end. That's how BIM storms work. We have to see what's going on. It's not just the final product on a board. It's very different than a final presentation type of an approach that we all are used to in uh, 
uh, the typical project process. Thursday, we're going to continue with the live sessions, mainly preparing for the Friday presentation um, at the planning department. And we'll also have a Okay, and um, let's see, we also put some links to the prototypes that we showed the other day. You can link, I'll show some of these live again today. And the new part that Vyneth mentioned is the clinic building that Balfour Beatty has been working on. This, this has a full-blown Navisworks and a Revit model and a programming model, so it has all parts of the life cycle, all the way from early design to the final design. And we actually placed it on a site in Oklahoma City and Balfour Beatty will be showing some of the workflows that happened there. And they, they do a really great job of showing, well, here are the steps that we went through, and here's the 30 different things that we could have studied, and here's the 10 different things that we studied in more detail, and here are the things that worked that didn't work from a cost and an energy and a constructability perspective. We want to see that kind of a workflow, and they're going to show us some examples of that on this particular project. Um, and I think I'll just jump in live next. Um, any comments, Vineth? Okay. All right. So maybe I'll show a little bit. Last week we were in Orlando at the Construction Owners Association. These are the different owners of facilities, education, healthcare, and we had a whole session there. And there were many different groups involved on a BIM storm, mini BIM storm there. We only had it there for a couple of days. But one of the projects is this one, which you'll see live next, which is the clinic. This is a programming model of a clinic that was taken into various analysis tools, including to uh, Beck's deprofiler tool for cost estimating and going all the way into uniform and cost estimating. So it gets into very kind of the nitty gritty details of this building. And that program was also taken into a different design analysis, uh, different tools for design by uh, Devin from Design Atlantic. Um, and uh, we brought this model over into Oklahoma City now. So. Let me jump live next, a little bit some more workflows to kind of go through some things that we want to see happening. And come on, I, th I think everybody needs to understand that there are, are actually multiple prototype models. The, the only real difference with the uh, clinic model is it's more complete. It's a very, That's right. It's a very exactly. detailed model, kind of full life cycle data kind of in it. Exactly. Yeah, because some teams want to get into all the way, well, we want to look at the COBE, Construction Operation Building Information Exchange, which is a mouthful, but it's about what goes inside the building that you go into operations and maintenance of, you know, mechanical equipment and systems. So there's a full-blown model of that all the way into that level of detail that you can also take a look at and work with if you want, or you can stay at the master planning level and do the, the massing models that we've been going through on some of the studies. So or, do like De things. or do like Devin did and uh, take it out into Rhino and sort of go off on a totally different tangent than be, and then come back. There's exactly, yeah. That's what happened here, actually. Yeah. So this is a good example of what Devin did. He took the, this is a, mo uh, um, uh, a spatial model that w of the Revit completed model of all the spaces that Devin then decomposed into programmatic departments. So basically going backwards and saying, what if we had to do a redesign based on this program requirement on a new building? And he went through various studies and ended up at a, a study like this using Rhino and uh, the programming elements from inside the, uh, the model. Okay, so let's go and look at a few things in detail. Um, in the, um, and these will be shared, I think they're already shared here, but I, some of them might not be shared yet, but we're just working on this just right before we got on the phone too. Um, we actually went through and um, one thing we did is we went and opened up, this is called planning study number one parcels, this will be shared. What we did is we said, okay, what if we look at it from a planning perspective and just strictly look at parcels? We thought it would be important to actually, and this is purely just on assumptions and with very minimal design input. Our intent was not really to work on any of the design of this project from the Onuma perspective. In BIMSTORM, we're here to support, so we're not necessarily suggesting this is a design that should work or not work. We're just showing you the process. But for example, we went through and said, okay, what if we look at it, get a clean slate here and say, we know that the quarter shore concept is about this area between the, the new freeway and the, the waterfront area. 
Um, but we started saying things like, oh, well, does it make sense to actually expand? And we know this, Rob I think it's Robinson Street, Robinson Avenue, obviously connects into downtown. We also even said, well, what happens if this park extends up to here? I know this was not part of the master plan, but this is just an idea. Maybe it's not the whole park, maybe it's the boulevard that gets expanded on, but we thought maybe having a, a stronger connection to the downtown would be interesting from a master planning perspective. We also looked at, um, in our proposal, I'm just showing again the process, not necessarily the final design. This is one one design idea of what happens if this area is a, 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 a downtown campus, a new a community college, a, a technology-centered campus, for example, next to this uh, new quarter shore area. And what happens if on the uh, western edge here there's another kind of a public facility, maybe a museum goes in here. We have no idea if this is a good idea or not. But we, we call this a train wreck. So we want to get input from others and say this is this is not going to work. For example, you can't have a community center here. But our idea was maybe there's an east-west access kind of connecting the Wheeler Park with this new uh, community college here, and then crossing over, uh, cutting the two um, park areas, uh, connecting through there. And then we also thought, well, maybe the river's edge should really stay green. It's just one idea again. There was some ideas about bringing the high-rise uh, mid mid-rise towers up to there. This is um, saved as parcels and we thought this would be interesting to actually even name the parcels so we called them A1 through A9 and B1 through B15 and C1 through whatever. So when you start placing buildings like this on a site you can actually start classifying it as this belongs to this parcel. Right and come on that that has just to put that in context without tying down the parcels it, it gets difficult to monitor and manage this from the from the city perspective the, the parcels exactly. start letting letting um, letting you attach activity to that specific area or value to how much is that parcel going to be sold for or land lease or whatever it's going to happen so it becomes very specific if we have a parcel here and we want to put 256 units and a 64 unit housing over retail is it going to fit and does it make sense to put on this parcel and what's the schedule of construction etc and what's the value of this particular unit on the 15th floor overlooking the park versus one that's facing the street on the other side and I think from a, um, a real estate perspective that becomes a very important discussion point regardless of the design no matter if the design is great or bad or whatever I think these type of discussions start happening um, from a business perspective and I believe from a city planning perspective now there are going to be discussions about infrastructure and how do we phase this in to actually encourage more development in this area if we put the, do we put the park in first do we bring build the streets out all those kind of things can start to be simulated here and we showed this a little bit last week but one other thing you could do here obviously is to start putting dates to these buildings so if you say well we want to do the construction this is we're not in edit mode here but if you go into edit mode and I'm, I'm hoping that that's some of the some of the type of studies that can happen this week when we get down to specifics about it. we're putting a, a design here there might be a group that just worked on the design of this building another one that looks at it strictly from the uh, business perspective of let's plan this for 2014 starting a construction in 2014 November and going into uh, December of 15 for example and completed on December 15th 24 and then when you go into the, the 3d like we showed earlier it starts showing that in schedules and all kinds of things start triggering just based on that alone um, you start to see the, uh, the, the date that's going to come in online um, the other thing are uh, that comes out of this in fact let's open up another scheme let's leave this one this is kind of a, a starter scheme so you can actually duplicate this and even edit it and make it your own and change it and there's probably mistakes here as far as assumptions go but we thought it would be important to actually break up the parcels instead of one big large area to actually break it down into these are just 300 by 300 foot blocks that we kind of used the underlying under the map under here that kind of showed the um, existing layout of buildings and streets based on the GIS data it looked like that was kind of the dimensions that were currently there whether it's right or wrong we're not sure but we we worked off of the existing grid and adjusted it slightly based on this uh, quarter shore area here and made these new parcels. Okay, so if we, let's open up a new tab here. And go into another project. 
So I started a project here called Planning Study 11512, and it's not shared yet. I'll go ahead and share this one as well with everybody so everybody can see this one as well. This is a quick planning study just prepared actually just literally just a few hours ago as we were looking at this. Um, and if we open this up, we duplicated that parcel map and then just started placing um, prototypical buildings on the site. We went through this exercise last week. We already have prototypical buildings available that can be copied and edited. We just took our prototypes and just plopped them on the site. Not much was thought as far as in you know, the layout and design other than saying, okay, if we have this kind of an access developed here, then maybe, maybe it makes sense to actually propose a museum here. We just placed a museum there on this, this left part of the site. And we also um, placed, started placing a performing arts center on the other axis, so the east-west axis. We said, what happens if we do that? and then started placing some offices near the freeway here, building up residential units through here. We thought maybe it makes sense to be higher density near the freeway and drop down here near the park and maybe along the waterfront we go higher density again. Um, so if we export this out, let's see if actually for 3D work, let's try the 3D view and see if it launches here. and also export it out. I think the 3D is going to be a little bit too heavy to render here, so I'll go ahead and export to Google Earth. We go export on the lower right, say export to Google Earth, and let's export the, the space volumes with departments and export that out. So it's going to build up a model with all the way down to the space level of all these buildings. Um, the thing with this is we also placed um, dates on these buildings. So we actually took groups of buildings and started saying what year they're gonna, the development's going to happen. So there's obviously business strategies of if you zone an area like this, how do you actually start encouraging development? We thought putting in the museum and the performing arts earlier on. So we said 2013 to 2014, the museum goes in and the performing arts center at the same time. And maybe some of these offices on the north side could also come in first and if you look at these other buildings down here you'll notice that we put them 2015 to 2016 completely arbitrary but just conceptually saying how do we schedule an area for development around here again I'm showing you this mainly to show you the process not necessarily to say this is a, the right design or anything uh, but we we expect that the teams that are working on this area are more familiar with the, uh, the implications of these kind of decisions that are happening here Okay, so now if we look at the downloads folder, I just downloaded a Google Earth file from this model. I'm going to launch it into Google Earth and see what's going on. So we're flying into Oklahoma City. And I believe Devin, what Devin did with the clinic, he actually did a study in Rhino and even exported it to Google Earth. So I'm just showing you a direct export from Anuma to Google Earth, but you could take any of these models and do a completely different design. So here we are in Google Earth with all the buildings. And um, you can see the uh, Performing Arts Center, which was copied from another community college project. Um, actually, I had a full-blown model. And then here are all the residential units in these areas. Um, and also on the on Onuma side, if we look at the reports here and do a building comparison, you start getting a building by building report of square footage, number of units. And I think that would be an interesting thing to, to present to the planning department on a Friday if we could start showing them actual numbers associated with the designs rather than look at this great design or look at this bad design. Um, so these numbers that were placed here, now we have each building and we start seeing the um, utility usage per year and the operations and maintenance costs, placeholders, but uh, working off the actual uh, data, the eye of them, the information of the, of the square footage of each of these buildings. And as you scroll to the right, it has each of them classified and, and the, the cost for each. So each of these is a project. Here comes a $132 million. Uh, building right here for 256 unit retail. Okay, is that the right price? I don't know. It's just using the default cost per square foot, which can be adjusted uh, as the studies progress. So I'm hoping that maybe the 
um, the Austin Commercial J. Dunn Manhattan group that's working would be using some of this data to run some numbers and say, okay, how much, uh, what's it going to, what makes economic sense for this building if we're going to create condominiums and sell them, for example? Does it make sense to build this density in Oklahoma City on this part part of the uh, writing from uh, people uh, with the um, with the breakouts, the comparisons? I guess people need to understand you can actually you can actually pull up. A cost of the entire of everything in that that you've done here as one right you, you know enormous lump sum, or you could you could pull up one building, right? And um, or you can you have three buildings and I want to compare these three and um, that ability to you know either get a you know aggregate of everything or or look at individual pieces is one of the things that makes it um, really valuable for the city I would think. Right. Yeah, so this is, if you click on one building, this is information about one building, but if I click on this large polygon that defines a whole planning area here, this green area here, this is actually an aggregate of all the buildings that we've landed so far. There's four million square feet of buildings here and how many acres and how much water is being used per year and uh, wastewater even. I think there was some discussion earlier about waste, right? About I think Tammy was mentioning that, right? I think that had more to do with demolition of this uh, upcap area. But um, if we build up and develop like this, how much infrastructure do we need to support it? Uh, well, one of the reasons, one of the reason to start breaking things into parcels is so you can get that kind of, you know, the if you try if you do the whole of the core to shore, it's going to be an intimidating number no matter what you do. But on right. a parcel by parcel basis, it it has. Um, you know, then you can start looking at it. Can we, you know, can we carve this up into realistic projects? Right. And then this this park area it was kind of interesting because I thought, okay, how large is this area? I, I measured it in Google Earth, and you could see this is two thousand five hundred feet, and and here from the freeway to here, and if you go all the way from downtown to here, it's it's uh, six thousand feet, and the, the width is uh, four hundred feet. And I thought, is that too big? And what we do a lot in Google Earth, if we just use Google Earth and start looking at you know other areas, in New York City, and say how big is Central Park, it's, it's it becomes a very quick way to kind of start comparing it to other places that are familiar. It doesn't make sense to have that large a park. New York City obviously is different than Oklahoma City, but you can start saying, okay, in, in comparison to Central Park, what are we dealing with? Well, Central Park is. Uh, from end to end, it's a huge park. Obviously, it's thirteen thousand by by uh, 2,900. So the, uh, the park being proposed in Oklahoma City is just a slice of Central Park, essentially, and that's what we're looking at. So it, it, Google Earth is a great tool for doing quick studies like that. You just have everything at your fingertip, fingertips. Um, okay, one more thing on this model here. And again, this model, just I want to stress how fast this moves. This, obviously, we're using prototypes and we're going moving very quickly, but we just started this this, this morning. There's probably a couple hours worth of work to get to this level of detail. And what happens is not really about the speed again, it's but the ability to, to do this study and then throw the whole thing away and say this doesn't make sense, let's try something else. But the most important thing is to expose it to others on, two, on Wednesday. When Finance is there on Wednesday, we want to see these kind of processes already underway so we can react to them and have a discussion. We don't want to come to Friday and all of a sudden see a beautiful rendering of this design because it wouldn't yeah, it's great. It's a great design. You have the final product, but how did you get there? What are the drivers? Does it make sense to even do this? Well, okay. Why don't you show? Why don't you let's show people a couple of different ways that they can actually manage that whole communication. Situation. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So this we ran through it a couple of times earlier in earlier web webinars, but I'm I'm studying this, for example, and I want to get input from others on the team. Um, in there's there's this button up here that's called BIM mail on the upper right. I'm on the site plan and I want to send a message to. Um, first of all, I have to share it. It's not shared, so it's not. I have to actually say, let's share this. Let me go into hey, edit mode. You forgot mode. to save it last time. Come on. Yeah, I didn't save it. So I'm going to go into edit mode. I'm the owner of the scheme, so I can decide what I want to do or not with this. And in, in future BIM storms have actually decided we're going to start making everything shareable by default. But here you actually have a choice. You can say I want to share or not. So you go into edit mode and you hit share. 
and you can let others see your work. So I'm going to say share with everybody. Everybody in the in the Oklahoma Brainstorm Studio, all 80 people or whatever are there already, can see my work. And I might be decide to share it with editing capability to um, Finance, Kimon, and Erica, that team. We've created a group called that. So you can see, okay, the whole studio can see what I'm doing, but these three people here, Finance, can actually edit my work. So I'm going to save that. As soon as I save it, it means I can communicate to others that have, can see this project. So now if I click on the BIM mail and say I want to send a message to Finance, Kimon, and Erica, and maybe I'll send it to everybody. I say, I'm, here, here's, here's my study A. New layout of quarter shore. What do you think? Um, and before and, you leave this, come on. Let me just jump in the middle of this. Right. This is also the place that if you've done a single building, you could be in a single building, mm -hmm. and say you wanted input from structural engineers or mechanical engineers, or uh, you want somebody to you want somebody to run an energy analysis. This is the place where you broadcast those things. Exactly. Yes. In fact, we'll do that too. So right here, I'm sending a message about the entire city model that I did to everybody. So I send them, send them a mail about that, and there's quite a few people here, so it'll take a while to kind of churn through that. And then the other so, option, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so, so just um, keep in mind that wherever you are in the model is where you're linking to when you send BIM mail. The reason it's called BIM mail is because it is actually dir connecting directly to the model. So right. if you send it at site plan level, it's, it's sending a site plan connection you send it at room level, it's sending a room level connection. Yeah, it's kind of like being on your smartphone and walking around the city and taking a photograph of uh, uh, a street and then that gets geotagged and you send it to your friend, they know exactly where you are if you have it geotagged. That whole location thing happens in the real world but also happens in a virtual model like this and it eliminates the need for me to say, well I have 20 different versions of this and can you look at this version and say what version are you looking at? save out a PDF, okay, that was yesterday's version. No, none of, the, none of that happens here because we send all messages through the model so you don't have to say, send me a copy of that. It's just all live. Okay, so the other option is if I go down to, next, in fact, this building is interesting because this is, the, this is the clinic model that we referenced earlier. If I open this building up, it's a medical clinic, um, and I'm going to open it up. It's version B, I believe, that uh, Alfred Beatty worked on. Um, the one that you saw earlier that Devin uh, took into Grasshopper and did a design with, uh, Balfour Beatty actually took the same exact same program model and created a different design with the same elements. They took the spaces and actually combined them into departments. So these aren't single spaces within the logistics department, for example, might have originally came from about 20 different spaces that were combined into a logistics department. And this particular model, if we look at it in 3D, it will zoom in and we'll see the uh, uh, just that model of the um, that comes up here. For some reason, my Google Earth is not rendering right now. I don't know why, but let's leave that behind for a second. Um, and what they did here is they, they just quickly, and you'll notice that it's not perfect when you're sketching with this kind of stuff, with this these kind of objects. We're not we're not expecting perfect alignment of things. It's more like sketching with a program and you're saying, well, let's put flight medicine right here and let's put an isolation toilet right there. Some things even overlap. It doesn't really matter because you're just trying to come up with a quick concept that you can communicate with the engineer and say, well, we're thinking of, or with the client saying, uh, you are the Department of Veterans Affairs. You asked me to design a clinic. This is our proposal for this clinic. Is this going to work for you? We want to see the train wrecks early on within a within minutes instead of days to say, should we put logistics next to the pharmacy? That discussion can happen obviously at this uh, diagram phase rather than getting into the, uh, the details of, of things. So that's one version of the clinic model. I'll show you where the original programming elements are of this um, so you can try it out yourself. But this is already placed within the city. Somebody else actually made, created this design. And what we did was exactly what we showed the other day. We just went into um, the, uh, the site plan. And we said, we know that Balfour Beatty designed a clinic to play, be placed on this site. And we're going to move it. They originally placed it somewhere over here, but we want to move it onto this parcel here. So we went into the add shared buildings. And we went and found their project. There's a long list of projects now, so you have to actually 
know the name of the team or they have to send you a BIM mail. This is why BIM mail is important because each of these has tens of hundreds of buildings sometimes, right? So we know that, uh, let's see, where is the Balfour Beatty project? Uh, I should have got a BIM mail on this, but I'm trying to find it here now from scratch here. Mm. There it is right there, ba Balfour Beatty BIMSTORM OKC. They sent it to us last week, then I select, there's actually two versions of a clinic, Clinic A and Clinic B. So if we go to Clinic A, we see the name of it right there, and we can click on it and say Add Building. So we've added another version of this, uh, this building here now. So there's Clinic A, which is the same as the one that we just placed there. And then we could add another one called Clinic B, a different design, same thing, and do a study between the two. So we're, we're taking their design from another project and adding it to our scheme they might have been working on the design of a building and we're working on the master planning of the city. And the same thing can happen with any of the projects that you, you everybody has already shared. So I see all these names here. Uh, it's kind of important as you're na naming your projects to make them recognizable. For example, I see Ryan's homework right here, but I see one called Various Schemes, multiple projects called Various Schemes. I have no idea who's, who's those are unless I get out of email and I see Ryan Williams inside there did a mixed use, I can go grab his mixed use building. And, and add it to the scheme. That's how you start collaborating. So you can literally have hundreds of people working together to start putting in projects like this on a site. Oh, yes. one. Yeah, this is one of the famous Revit models we were working that Amber was, I think Amber helping import. Was helping with last week. Okay. So um, I have one. Yeah. yeah. So so come on 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 those two dental, those two clinics. Why don't you do a com quick run a comparison between them? Um, we could do a report, I guess, if we yeah. do, oh, a comparison one to the next. I guess we could yeah. do that, huh? Okay, sure. okay, let's try that. Let's try going into clinic, let's call this one clinic B. Was it clinic B? And this one clinic A. You can actually compare again, uh, across different projects too, but let's just do it within this project. Okay, so imagine clinic A was what the client asked you to design and you did another version of that. So I'm gonna go into clinic B. I haven't even checked this to see if their IDs are in there yet. So this might not work, but I'm just doing it on the fly here. Let's just see how that works. So um, you're editing this, aren't you? Yeah, it's so fine if it's editing. <laughs> it's it's okay, I, think I, might, I might be able to do a comparison without, I could probably do a comparison. No, I think you need to get out of it, yeah. I'm out. Okay, fine. That took over my scheme for a while, and he's editing. But yeah, sorry. It's not letting it go. Well, let me make sure. Let me. It says I'm out. You at the project level, and you released it. Yeah. Okay, let's try this again. Actually, this comparison should work because I see the IDs in there. Okay, let's go back out to project level. Go back to project level. Sorry. It says currently editing. Did you unlock unlock it right there? Yeah. I'm all the way out and unlocked and everything. Oh, interesting. Sorry, wrong place. I wasn't unlocked. Now I'm. Good. Now it's unlocked. Okay. You got it. That's when I send you a nasty BIM mail and say, "Let go of my project." That's right. That's what <laughs> BIM mail is for. <laughs> it wouldn't be the first do. time. Exactly. But if we were using another, we're showing you one way where we're both inside the same project, but you can actually do it by, uh, oh, I didn't save it earlier, so I'd actually move them over here, but you can actually do it where um, you're using, you're designing one of the clinics and I'm x refing it in so I can move it around and it actually lets me edit it as edit location as well while you're working on the other projects. There's multiple ways of doing this. We're just showing one right here. But uh, let's go ahead and move these back into where we had them here temporarily. I didn't save it earlier, so it didn't actually register, but okay. So here is Clinic B and Clinic A. Okay, so we're gonna go into Clinic B. And open that up. And it's called a building comparison. So imagine that the client gave you Clinic A as the requirement, and I'm designing, I changed the design and made Clinic B. And um, under the attributes, there's one called building comparisons. 
And what I can do now is say, okay, I want to open the settings and find the other clinic. So I'm in clinic B right now, and I'm going to go find um, clinic A that happens to be in my study that I'm doing today, and I'm going to find out of this long list here, clinic B, and oops, clinic A, right? I want to find clinic A right there. So I'm in clinic B, I'm going to compare it to clinic A, and I'm going to look at the space numbers and do a comparison of areas, add it to my list, and now I have a, a check mark here where I can say, okay, I want to do a comparison of that. So if I click that comparison study, it's going to, it's looking at two buildings. Let's see if this works, because we haven't checked it. No, it didn't work, the IDs don't match, but that's okay, you'll see the concept. If the room numbers were matching across, you'd start seeing where things were changed. Uh, so you'll notice that one has 45 square feet, another one does not. It's, if it doesn't exist, another one says you're 100% different. If you had the numbers matching across, you'd actually see what the, what the delta was. And down at the bottom, it's showing my total. Actually, it's actually you can see the difference, 43,000 versus 54,000. So you can even either do it at building level or space by space and see what was added or subtracted. Client asks you to design a 43,000 square foot building. You're coming back with a 54,000 square foot building. So there's going to be a conversation with the client of why there's 20% less or more from what they asked to design. And there's, there might be a good reason, it might be a bad reason, but that's a way to kind of check check the numbers between your design and what was um, asked by the client. Um, believe it or not, this is this is a big deal in a lot of projects, even very advanced projects. Uh, that you'd expect things to kind of line up, but it's always a challenge to kind of make sure things are in sync because the project is moving, the program requirements are changing, and teams are doing different things, and uh, the story starts changing as far as what was the original requirement. So being able to track that is, is another thing that we, we've we been doing a lot in, in uh, as part of these BIM storms, how to compare uh, requirements to the original to where we are. Okay, one more thing that we can check here is um, just looking at another, there's a lot, there are a lot of reports that you can open up here and um, one report is um, look at the cost summary, um, you can look at floor slab areas, so you can actually pull up a report of all the buildings on this, there are, there are, there are, there are all the buildings here, this is actually building by building, how big the slab is on each floor and what the total gross square foot is of each building. So you can really start breaking it down by total square feet of the building or by floor or by number of units. All that kind of stuff can happen in, in these reports. Another one would be, um, let's actually go up to the site level for a second. So we'll, we'll leave the scheme for now. We've looked at it enough, but we're going to go up to the site level. Yeah, come on, we've got about 10 minutes. Um, don't, it right. doesn't appear that there are a lot of questions, but... Uh, yeah, you know, we might maybe maybe questions. we right. should let let people uh, run quick through this and then let people sort of ask some questions. Yeah, why don't we go ahead and do some questions now as I'm doing this? I'll show the clinic uh, in the end as far as programming, but this is a report of all the units. So you see the number of residential units. It's reporting right here the buildings that we put in, and you'll see that we're proposing 2,004 residential units in this area. So my question would be to Austin Commercial or Jay Dunn, whoever is doing it analysis, can this area justify 2,004 units uh, over this period um, with this much square footage? And we could start breaking it down even further, but these are the kind of reports that can be used for that type of analysis. So do we have any questions, uh, Tammy and Lee, from your class? Or anybody else online? Do you have questions? Oh, we see something from Tammy online here. Okay, Tammy's saying, actually the park north of the I-40 is already in the master plan and much larger. Oh, okay. It is the central park in the quarter shore plan and the park in our river district area is a promenade park per the quarter shore plan. Oh, okay. Well, that, that's great to know, actually. <laughs> I just assumed it was not there, but knowing that that's part of it and it should be larger, I don't know how much larger it would get. Does it actually take over two blocks? I don't know, I just took one block north. But maybe it's it's two blocks wide. You were just showing them concept anyway. So yeah, um, there is a um, there is one question about um, what about energy comparisons. So can you uh, maybe do a side by side of those two uh, 
university buildings and from an energy standpoint. Sure. Yeah, that's a good that's a good thing to study. Let's try that for a second. Uh, but let me change this park. Maybe it's the wrong assumption, but let's go ahead and change this park. So Tammy says this park is larger. I don't know how much larger it should be. I'm just going to assume it's about two blocks, maybe. I don't know. I'll just leave it at that for now. And then we can always change. It's no big deal. OK, so let's go back. How to do an energy comparison analysis. I'll go back to the one study I had with two buildings. And we'll just place two identical buildings side by side just to see what that might look like. Um, so we'll take these two buildings here. And let's actually just turn off everything since we already saw the map stuff in the background. Let's just focus on buildings for now. Okay, so we have these two buildings. 256 unit. In fact, let's delete this one and just create two of the exact same ones. I'm just copy pasting. So we have two identical buildings now. And if we do a report of these two buildings, just leaving all the defaults in, I think I moved too fast. And it's, yeah. yeah, I didn't like that too much, did it? I was thinking about something. Well, while it's, while it's thinking or while you're refreshing that, um... Erica was asking a question about importing when you import XML from SketchUp. Mm -hmm. uh, she uh, she's getting floors that are vis visible in 3D, but they don't show any geometry. Yeah, the import from SketchUp to Onuma takes a little bit of practice. There are certain rules you have to follow because SketchUp does not have kind of that the BIM standards in there. We're kind of forcing everything in SketchUp is kind of a shape until you identify it as a floor or a space. And that takes some practice to understand that workflow. It would take longer than a few minutes to explain that here, but there are some tutorials on that. Going out to SketchUp is easy. If you start from scratch in SketchUp and bring it back in, there are certain rules that you have to tell a block, for example, uh, that it's a slab on the floor on the third floor versus this is, is this a space or is this a whole building? Why don't you, why don't, right as we finish up, come on, why don't you, um, as you come out, basically go to those look go to that site so that people who want to go and look at the videos and the workflows right can see that okay to show them where it is okay so we have the two identical buildings in here now and if we go to the building comparison do a side by side of these two buildings you'll notice that everything should be the same which it is so here's the energy utilities and energy cost here total construction cost the way you change this is you, there's several ways to get to the settings. One way is just to click, double click on the building, and then you go to the settings button down here, which opens up this interface of all these buildings. So here are the two buildings. Um, there's several settings here that you can do, but we'll go into the utility. These are based on Department of Energy, just default values, but typical building in the US uses 18.9 kilowatt hours per square foot. So if you say we're going to be 20% lower than that, for example, you'd say, okay, we're going to be at 15 kilowatt hours. Natural gas is 0.5 cubic feet per square foot and on down the line. Gallons, 20 gallons per square foot. So if we say we're going to lo low flush toilets and all that, we're going to reduce that um, and on down the line. So if you change these, and you could actually even put the carbon, there's even a link to how do you cal calculate carbon footprint, you know, how many pounds of recycling stuff do you have? And I'm just putting in random numbers here um, and save that. That's the energy cost. The next tab is operations and maintenance. This comes from Whitestone Research. There, there's a group out of Santa Barbara that has default standard values. How much does it cost per square foot for custodial? So let's say let's drop that here as they, well. And Whitestone has a very deep database of um, uh, parametric uh, operating and maintenance costs. And they're, they're surprisingly accurate. Yeah. And it's a good starting point to start a discussion of, yes, we know we're going to have waste and we know we're going to have custodial, but if you either you use the Whitestone numbers or you might be working with an owner that has very specific numbers that says, well, our custodial cost averages X number of dollars per square foot for a residential tower of this type in Oklahoma City. So I changed it for this one building. I'm going to leave the other one building as, other building as is. So I'm injecting these new rules into these buildings. And now if I go and I go to the report, 
and building comparison. And open this up. You'll notice that the numbers have changed. So there's our uh, utility summary cost right there. And our operations and maintenance has changed down here. And that's just from changing those assumptions. So you can continue to tweak this. So this is a good way to kind of say, well, here's a default value for a typical residential tower. On this project, we're going lead whatever, and therefore we're going to assume we're going to be using less energy, whatever. And you put that in as assumption. Very quick way to kind of get an overall sense of what's going on with our, the 10 buildings that we're proposing to put in here. We use this a lot of times with schools where, where a school system will have um, some very specific, they know what their costs are. And so we'll plug in their cost and then we'll, we'll set down and, you know, we'll look at, you know, what people are achieving in that area in, um, in other, you know, as they set goals and we'll, we'll establish the goals this way. And you can really start getting a very clear handle as to you know what very early what does it do to you if you if you say we're we're going to you know put in P with photovoltaics and we're going to we're going to really hold everything to the everybody's feet to the fire and we're going to see you know achieve a twenty five percent we're going to be at twenty five percent of the standard things like that mm -hmm. uh, you can really you can really get a very quick idea of what what the values associated with that are. Right. Another thing that we do also is if you're doing a quick massing study like this and you're working with another team that has engineering applications like Vasari and all the other engineering analysis tools, the engineer might say, well, if you rotate the building this way, you're going to reduce your, all the units are facing south and west and southeast and southwest here. This obviously is going to have a different energy requirement if it's the exact same design. And then you can input those values back in here and start running another analysis with that. So that's another quick way of working with teams. That's the part of the workflow that we want to see that you'll see what Balfour Bailey actually does things like this, where they do quick studies, get the other team to do another analysis and say, okay, if you rotate this by five degrees, you're going to save X amount of dollars per energy per year. Okay, so we have a few minutes left. Just one last place to point to are the, um, the Kobe um, the prototypes in the prototypical buildings, we actually added two new buildings. It's called number eight clinic Kobe model and the clinic program requirements, blocking and stacking. If I open up the clinic Kobe model, this is a completed design that actually has a full blown Revit model attached to it in the attachments. Uh, it's sitting not in Oklahoma, it's sitting in California. So you'd have to move it over to Oklahoma if you want to use it. But if you open up this model, it actually originated in Revit. So this is the completed design. But what we did in the previous BIMSTORM last week is we took this and decomposed it and say, this is a clinic program that we want to use to start the design for a new project. And that's what you saw, uh, what Devin took earlier in the uh, analysis that he did and took the, the model into um, okay, uh, come Redis on. You, come yeah. on. You're, mm -hmm. you're cheating. Right. And you need to go back. You told them that uh, they could just take this from California to Oklahoma. You need to really quick show them what that means. <laughs> okay. It's All not right. fair to. It's not fair just to say you well, do it. Well, we actually, I actually did that, didn't I? Okay, we'll do it again. <laughs> we, we did it actually when I took the A and B. Oh, I must have missed it. Yeah, you know, when I brought uh, clinic A and B, I was actually bringing it in from. Well, why don't you just take the. Why don't you just take that Kobe model and? Uh, well, no, I don't guess you want to re, you re geotag it. Well, it's not it's not difficult actually. It's very easy. So we could say, okay, we're in this model that we were looking at earlier in Oklahoma City, and we want to grab that Kobe clinic, the full blown Kobe clinic from California, bring it into Oklahoma. The way that we do it is exactly like I did before. You go into edit mode. So this means that you can bring in any building that's accessible to you from other teams or from yourself that you worked on a previous project as a prototype or as a design that you want to insert into this. And a lot of architects, myself included, would kind of think it's not a good way to do the things as far as design goes, but it's actually a very quick way to um, at least get a starting point. So there's a clinic, clinic Kobe. I'll bring in the, the program blocking and stacking one. So there's a blocking and stacking Kobe. Now it's coming from California to Oklahoma. And it's up to me to take that program and make a design out of it that fits in Oklahoma City. Okay, I think we're a little bit past the hour here. Are there any questions? 
everything is crystal clear for the rest of the week as far as what's going to happen when Finance hits the ground there. Uh, and you guys are going to be ready to share all your projects. In fact, they're already kind of shared. We see your projects there, but I have no idea who's doing what. You have to point me with a BIM, point us with a BIM mail and saying, here's a design study that we have been doing. Um, any questions on the chat? I don't see any other new questions. Oh, Tammy says the green space is a very important design element and the quarter shore is intended to create green axis along the Harvey spine. Okay, great. Uh, but that's all we see here. Oh, Mike has some questions. Some yeah, I've, I've been I've been even kind of catching Mike's tracking it. Okay, we're okay. Okay, Erica, you answered Erica. All right, I think we're oh, there's there's oh, a clinic. Yeah, show then, show Erica where that uh, those helps are. Okay, the helps yeah, are if you go to I think we actually have them on the BIMStorm site, don't we? BIMStorm. Oklahoma City. Watch webinars here. Uh, agenda. How to participate? Did we link them here? I forgot if we linked them here. I think we I don't, did. I don't recall. We did. You did some of them, but did you do SketchUp? Yeah. Here they sketch? are, right here. So there's lessons. Adding 4D Revit. Blah 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 blah. Let's see. If you go, oh, there it is, right there. Using SketchUp to create city massing models. Here's all the SketchUp ones. So SketchUp to create massing models is here. It's actually a Vimeo site. Oh, for some reason, this is linking. What's going on here? Uh, you've back. got a dot in the middle of YouTube. There we go. All right, so here's all, there's a bunch of links here. Um, OK, I think that's good for today, right? Yeah, I think so. OK, so so Fine's getting on a plane tomorrow, heading to Oklahoma City, and is going to see a lot of activity there, and also remotely from others that are participating, like Val for Beatty. We'll be on from Pasadena, and we thank everybody for jumping into this BIM storm. Thank you, Finest, for flying to Oklahoma City <laughs> okay. to be there. And, and hopefully, everybody, would, we're going to start seeing a lot of BIM mails and uh, the agenda. Start, uh, start seeing what's going on here. Yeah, from everybody there. Looking forward to it. Okay, great. Thank okay. you very much. Signing off. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.